Greetings Church. Um, just wanted to uh, say thank you. Um, I just came back from the um, pastor's appreciation luncheon that I was talking about outside. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I was uh, maybe a little bit abrupt there uh, with, the, um, with the message that I had just given. Um, I didn't know how they were going to respond with me uh, showing up. But um, I'm thankful that God allowed uh, me to, uh, to sit among the leaders of Portland and um, the church leaders, the pastors of Portland at this luncheon. Um, it, was, it was a good time. It was fun. Um, I appreciated being there. Um, when I got there, people were just uh, coming in. Um, my heart got startled <laughs> when I first got off the, uh, the, uh, the elevator. I, I was put right back into um, the situation with the man that I met uh, earlier the morning. In, in the morning, when um, when I had gotten off the elevator and asked him for instruction, um, I didn't see him, but I saw all the other men that were working together with him, and that <laughs> that literally just floored me. Um, and I was even further away from the entrance of um, where the uh, where the appreciation luncheon was going to be held. So, I, you know, walking away from this whole thing, this experience, I just think God is a merciful God, and, and sometimes He allows us to go through things um, for a purpose and for a reason. Um, when I got inside, so after I was done preaching the message, and I, I really didn't even offer, um, you know, a, a salvation opportunity for the people that had heard me. Uh, in the area. Um, the message that I had preached was the uh, unappreciated pastors and leaders of God's church. Um, I had just gotten done with uh, dealing with an issue with another church. Um, I really wasn't a member of that church, but I was an attender. Uh, and I was offended several times, at least three different times. Uh, this earlier this morning uh, was, one of, was once one of those times. And I felt like God was leading me to go to the church, deal with the issue, and then go to the uh, this this luncheon. It wouldn't have been a good or a wise thing if the Lord had chastened me in the luncheon with other leaders there without first dealing with um, the issue of the maltreatment or the fact that I, excuse, that I really wasn't fellowshipping with these um, with the members of the church. Pushing that aside, um, I basically uh, address some issues of repentance, repenting from sin, repenting from segregation, um, uh, repenting from the same-sex lifestyle and other sins that is crippling the church. Um, after that, I was able to go here and and uh, meet one or two of the leaders. I didn't really meet a whole lot of people. I think I met uh, the, the person that was in charge from KPDQ. Um, and to be quite honest, I don't even remember his name. Um, we only talked for a little bit. Um, and afterwards, I, I met one other person who works for the ch uh, children's ministry. I believe her name is either Brenda or Tamra, or one or the other. Uh, she was there with her husband at a church. Uh, the other people were talking, so I didn't really get a chance to talk to them at the table. Um, we did receive this coming in. Uh, this was the guest speaker. Uh, his name is Chris Brown. He gave us a, a synopsis of his um, testimony, and then he spoke to us about one of the most important things um, that's really crippling the church, and that is the whole idea of finances. Um, now, remember, I've been preaching outside uh, and reminding the church that um, in terms of finances, we need the support of the body, um, and that is one of the areas where we are hurting the most because a lot of the demands that come to the church um, is as a result of um, and we have to respond as if we have all, our, all of our ducks in a row but oftentimes we don't um, and um, one of the things he was saying is that um, one of the things he's learned about the church is the most essential uh, part of, of, of church life and what's keeping the church going is um, how much how much we put in that pot because of all of 
you know, the budgeting and, and, and everything that you know, you know, that entails um, church leadership, church service, church ministry, um, the whole bit. Um, we didn't go through this book, but um, there was a, a, a note here for us. Um, it basically, it says, Dear Pastors and Ministry uh, Leaders, uh, Today we celebrate each of you as ministers of the gospel. Uh, we recognize and are so appreciative of the spiritual impact that you have in our churches, communities, and our lives. Thank you for the love that you give to those under your care. The uh, countless prayers that you have prayed over our families and the endless hours that you spend with our children uh, for these things and more, uh, we are forever grateful. Thank you for being the voice of the unchanging truth of God's word. Each and every week, we are deeply indebted to you for taking care of God's people in his service, Dennis Hayes, general manager. That is probably the person that I, I met. I, I'm not exactly sure. I don't remember. But there is a, um, a tidbit here about C.S. Lewis. Um, apparently, they're having a, um, in Gresham, they're having a, some sort of a event um, honoring him on October 20th. And of course, we have the uh, radio speakers that are featured. Um, out of KPDQ, uh, and you know our Dr. McCarthy here, the man that's put me uh, in this very situation. Um, and then there's prayer works, and let's see, and there's some other things, and this is pretty much the, um, what we, sort of like the, uh, the agenda of the day, right? Uh, we met, we prayed, we worshipped, um, what else did we do? Um, we had a, a buffet lunch. It was great. I mean, it was just awesome. <laughs> Sandwiches and um, chips and, and fruit salad, regular salad, just the sodas, coffee. I mean, you name it. We had it. It was great. And good fellowship with uh, people of like-minded faith. Uh, so I'm, I'm glad I didn't miss it. I'm glad I was reminded of stewardship. And it was right in line with what I've been, te what I've been asking for. Remember, I mean, when, when he said... <laughs> finances I was just like God thank you because that's exactly what people don't understand yes we can get down with the Word of God but we need the support of the church in other words if we're gonna spend our time praying and we're gonna spend our time studying God's Word and we're gonna spend our time doing the work of the ministry um, we have to I mean we can preach repentance all day every day but we have to, I mean I don't even pass out flyers like I used to uh, to do so, it requires uh, financial support, um, knowing that the church is going to be there uh, to to aid us, to help us. Um, that's probably one of the reasons why I can't hire someone to help me with, with evangelism or hire someone to uh, play the guitar uh, for me. I mean, I, I would love to be able to pay uh, an assistant pastor or to pay... Um, uh, uh, an assistant uh, administrator, someone to do the evangelism, um, and someone to to pass out flyers, to pass out um, things, so that uh, the the ministry uh, could continue on, uh, you know, could grow on Sunday mornings. For me to do everything and then to go and find a job on the side, it makes it very very difficult. Um, I can't do I can't do two things at once. You know, it, it, it's hard. Uh, doing it, especially when you're not getting any kind of um, help from the body, um, and I'm, and, you know, I'm doing it from scratch. I was just looking at something here uh, to show you, so you'd have an idea of what I'm talking about. Um, let's see here. Two most important meetings. You know, it cannot happen without without the support of the church, without the church coming alongside. And in my case, I would have to hire someone. Uh, to do the work of the ministry. Take for example, I'll, I'll give this to you, take for example um, this, this right here. This is a color copy. Uh, it costs 59 cents per impression. So that means it's 59 cents in the front, 59 cents in the back. But not only does it cost money to print, um, and this is just to advertise uh, the ministry. Uh, also, this here is our prayer cards, right? Prayer cards that you will find in bulletins, right? Those, this also, 59 cents. Um, and then, of course, 
the invitation that we have to pass out, uh, not only inside of the church on a Sunday morning, but also outside uh, to the various people that are scattered around looking for a Sunday morning worship service. I haven't done this uh, because in the money that I have gathered, I've literally just put it in the bank and left it there and, and have not touched it. Because once you start using money, uh, it, it's sort of like running water, you know, and, and it just goes and it flows. Uh, so it's almost like I, I, I'm putting uh, putting money away in a piggy bank to see if maybe one day God will give me enough to either purchase a, a trailer or something, a business trailer, where I could actually have a, a meeting place uh, somewhere um, where we could gather. But literally churches, I mean, take for example this, okay? Um, this is like a Sunday bulletin, right? This is like a Sunday bulletin. Uh, and on Sundays we have to, you know, I would pass this out, right? Um, I'll pass this out to to the to the individual um, members of the church that would come on a Sunday morning. This is just an example, but what I'm trying to say is that this also costs. So, it, it, and you know, and it's double sided, um, and so this is why we ask for. This is why when I'm outside, I ask for this. Right? It's the money from here is for this. Now, I haven't done it yet. Why? Because um, if I'm doing the preaching, somebody else is going to have to pass out these invitations. The Bible study invitations that you see here and also the Sunday morning invitations. The Bible study invitations are, is this right here. The Sunday morning is this right here. So I literally have to, in my case, I would have to go as far as hiring someone because I don't have anyone standing with me in the faith. Um, so that's the reason why this is out there. Now, I could have typed it up and uh, and made it look, you know, to the, to the level, but bottom line is I want to remind you, um, I want to remind you that this is the reason why when I'm out there, um, I'm doing the work that I do uh, to invite uh, members of the church to come into fellowship. If nobody comes, then it makes it that much more difficult to, to do the work of the ministry. And if I don't have anyone doing the administration and I don't have anyone helping me with the uh, evangelism, uh, you know, passing out the flyers, talking to people, praying for people, uh, praying uh, for the people to, to come to Christ or to join the fellowship, um, it's not a one-man job. That's why the Lord uh, set, it, set it up in Scripture that they were paired up by two. You know, Peter and John. When you read um, in Acts, Peter was, um, you know, was partnered up with John, uh, Paul and Barnabas, right? Or at first it was Barnabas and Paul, but then the Lord changed it to Paul and Barnabas, Paul and Timothy. Um, and those are the men who assisted, um, those are the men who assisted uh, Paul in doing the ministry that the Lord had called him to do. And since no one is uh, volunteering to come alongside, and I, I really haven't had the nerve yet to go up to any of the young men of the various churches that I've visited to say, hey, will you come alongside me and help me do ministry? Um, I think one of the reasons why is because I'm not yet married and I don't want to put my ministry or these men or um, in a position of um, sort of like in, in, in one of those uh, positions where it's questionable, you know, because we live in a society where men go that way and I don't ever want to put it in the mind of the American people or the American churches or um, communities that go in that direction that that sort of thing um, will be going on or has gone and, and to cause the ministry to stumble. Um, and so, you know, I don't, I don't even want to put it there. So the result being that I'm waiting to see if God will perhaps uh, bless me first with a spouse and then um, from there I think I'll be more comfortable to ask the individual members of, of, of different churches perhaps to come alongside but at this rate I would for me to do it myself I would have to hire someone it would, it, and I would have to have the funds there um, to pay them you know for the you know hourly wages like uh, you know during the course of the you know, for a Bible study. And of course, we don't have a gathering of Christians, right? Um, I don't have a gathering of Christians that are w already working with me. Um, and, and so, you know, to, to establish or to build uh, a team of people who has the same vision as I do, it's gonna take, it's gonna take some resources, it's gonna take some support, some prayer, and all of the above. So, um, 
So we began with this. Um, at the door, that's what we were given, and we were given this, also this was on the table, uh, and so he talked about uh, true stewardship, and uh, basically what do you do with the stewardship of the church, right, what do you do with it. Um, and then afterwards, we, 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 we grabbed this, um, we grabbed this on our way out, and there's just a ton of information in there. I think one of the things that uh, he had made mention of, the, the, the head speaker, um, was that we can probably order one of these um, for a year? You know, we, we get we get these for for a year, but I, I ran out the door, so I didn't even bother. I'll probably jot them a note um, and um, a thank you note uh, through an email, and uh, and then ask for them to send me um, the year of of these journals. Um, I think if I was to summarize this entire um, the entire morning. That, that is uh, the, the trial and also the luncheon and everything. I think the passage of scripture that I would use is Ephesians uh, 4 verses 11 and 12. Uh, the scripture says, and he gave some as apostles, and I'm reading from the New American Standard Bible, which says, and he gave some as apostles and some as prophets and some as evangelists and some as pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of service, to the building up of the body of Christ, right? so. God in Christ gave the church it, it individual members the position of, uh, of apostleship. Uh, he gave some the position of prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers for one purpose and one purpose only for the equipping of the saints. Okay, so he gave men these gifts so that they can equip the various members of the body of Christ. Uh, for the work of service. The work of service is what I just showed you, the evangelism, uh, the outreach, reaching out to the unbelievers with the gospel, reaching out to the church um, by inviting them to Bible study and inviting them to Sunday morning worship service. But right as of right now, I can't do that if I don't have a place of worship, if I don't have um, a staff to help me, if I don't have a congregation. And that's why I'm out there and I am still preaching repentance right this is what's going to bring in um this is what's going to bring in the saints right the ungodly the ungodly will repent of their sins and become saints who worship god in christ at the foot of the cross right um and so we these are the people that i go after with the message of repentance uh, i go after the ungodly the people who don't have god in their lives and um and then the church i ask them to support why do i ask them to support because I need them to help me so that I can reach from the pool, the group of people that comes to Christ after this message has been preached, when they believe, and from there, those whom God is calling to do ministry can help me do ministry. You know, the worship leaders, uh, the administrators, other members of the uh, body of Christ who has a spiritual gift that is right in line with Christian leadership, which is what I just read to you from Ephesians. So this, so if I was to summarize, if I was to summarize um, this morning's message or everything that has happened thus far, it would be for ele uh, Ephesians four eleven through twelve. Um, now that this, uh, now that this luncheon is passed, uh, I have to continue. Right, I have to go right back out there again, and sometime during the week or on Sunday, preach the gospel um, and pray that God will open the door for ministry um this is this was my, my, my name <laughs> this was my name tag when i was uh at the table there i did meet one church uh one, one man there who was a uh from gleason baptist church uh he uh, uh he invited me to come on a saturday at 6 30 p.m to uh to to his fellowship and to pray with them and so Perhaps this weekend or the weekend after that, I'll take them up on that. But I'm going to go ahead and close out and, and, and pray and um, ask that you would continue to pray uh, for me and pray with me that uh, the Lord will continue to do his work of the ministry because it is difficult. I feel like a missionary, you know, um, out there doing the work and not knowing what God has in store, right? Um, I've dealt with. Uh, unbelievers in the world and I have dealt with both believers and unbelievers in the church congregation um, and looking at the future not sure what God what doors God will open 
and what doors God will close. But in any case, the ministry continues, right? That's that's what um, that's what Paul had basically encouraged us to do is to preach the gospel in season and out of season. Now, whether or not salvation comes, um, it's in the hand of God. Whether people come to Christ or not, that's in the hand of God. But we continue because that is what is important um, for God is our continuation in his gospel. Somebody has to do the work, right? If the construction worker um, has to build, the church has to preach the gospel. Um, and the next generation until he returns. In other words, we don't stop um, because he's not going to stop creating man. And he's not going to stop demanding for man to be reconciled to him. Somebody has to do it in this generation as it was done in past generation and as it will be done in generations to come. We don't know those generations that are coming. But while we are here, this is where we're at. You know, someone says thank you and we want to thank you, KPDQ, for giving um, us the church um, the encouragement to keep going like you, you know like someone says you know it's not every day um, thanks is given to the members of the clergy um, and oftentimes when we look for clergy we're looking for people on the papacy level we're looking for cardinals um, and people that are high up and well recognized they don't look down this way you know um, guys that are standing at a street corner <laughs> preaching the gospel they don't look for guys on my level trying to start from scratch you know uh, with pennies nickels dimes and quarters anything for a cup of coffee right um, they're not looking you know just just to go to Starbucks and buy this it's four bucks right that means two dollars for the cup and two dollars for the drink um, and so, you know, just, just for this little tea bag right here, this this right there is four bucks. And I and my jingle is pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters, anything for a cup of coffee. Now, what's my new jingle? This is my new jingle, right? Please financially support the preaching and teaching of the Church of Portland um, and repent of your sin. And that that applies to the ungodly and to the unbeliever. Let me go ahead and pray, pray, pray us out. And um and remember to pray for all the churches and all of the leaders that are in, in the Portland area, Seattle and, and Los Angeles, just the church globally, right? Um, that God would um, strengthen the church. Pray for me that I would find a wife in the church. I, uh, I don't want to marry Gabriel <laughs> through the community or anything anything like that, um, that I would find a, a wife in the church and I would be supported by the church um, in, at some uh, eventful time. Um, I'd finish seminary and get this ministry going. Um, it's, it's disheartening at times, but it's also God um, sharpening me, I think, uh, because it's that's how he does it. Let me go ahead and pray and ask that uh, God will bless you so you can bless us in Christ Jesus. Father, thank you for this afternoon. Thank you for the opportunity to go to the um, luncheon I pray, Lord God, for all the pastors that were there with their wives. I pray for all the single pastors and all the uh, head pastors and lay pastors. And Lord, thank you for the women and the men that work with children and those that are uh, missionaries uh, and pastors abroad. Father, I thank you for all the, the people who put this bunch together. And Lord, I thank you that you will continue to use this generation's leaders to impact your church. For, um, for godliness and for eternal life. Father, may you strengthen the church. May you encourage the church. May you not allow the church to lose heart. Uh, even uh, there are there are hundreds and thousands more of pastors, Lord God, that were not at that meeting that should have been there um, because of how detrimental it is to encourage and to build up um, the, the body, Lord God, because of persecution and, and because of discouragement or, or, or financial setbacks. Father, I pray for all of those men who work hard at preaching and teaching and do not get paid, like myself. I pray that they will not get discouraged and that um, someone will, Lord God, um, eventually come through and, and put a penny there, nickel or dime or quarter, whatever is put in front of them, let them receive it gladly as from you. I pray that those brothers do not lose their hope in Christ and they do not lose their hope in um, Christianity and that you didn't overlook them, you simply have not yet gotten to them. Um, so Father, I pray that, you know, I personally appreciate all the pastors that I've, uh, whose churches I've gone to 
and um, and have been blessed by the preaching of their word. Um, I pray that you will continue to encourage and build up uh, the men and women of Portland and of the West Coast in this nation that does the work of the ministry. May um, many other uh, many other establishments take the take the opportunity, Lord God, to continue to encourage our leaders in the church, Lord God. Um, and may you be with KPDQ as they continue to travel outside of Portland and outside of the U.S. to um, put these luncheons on, Lord God. Uh, may they be funded by many churches um, and be supported uh, by many saints. Uh, may you be glorified. May you bless the men that are preaching from KPDQ, um, even in their own establishments, because, Lord God, they too need... Uh, the support of the church and and I know your word says Lord God that you are amply uh, you are rich with beyond our capacity to uh, to understand may the riches and the goodness of heaven come down from above uh, and fall upon all of us Lord God so we can do the work of the ministry um, not while we are in debt um, indebted to anyone but Lord um, I pray that you would remove the debts that are holding back the church's growth perhaps, or the church's spiritual growth. Um, sometimes debt causes division and divorce within the body of Christ. And so, Father, I pray that you will not allow that to happen, but that you will bless um, each church in accordance with your will. Um, may you bless the remainder of the day. Uh, may you bless the city, Lord, because they had to hear that message this morning. Um, pray that you will forgive this church of uh, of the sin that it had committed against me. Pray that you would work in the heart of the unbelieving uh, gay community clan or whoever that group was, Lord God, that felt the need to come out against me for their church or their group. Um, I pray that they would repent and they would turn away from that sin and no longer approach me and discourage me and cut me down, um, both public and private, in front of people and behind um, the people's back. But I pray, Lord God, that there would be peace. Uh, if you do not want Lord God, for us to fellowship and let us be at peace um, while we fellowship with others. Even Barnabas and, and Saul, um, you know, switched uh, partnership and went in their separate directions, uh, never to see each other again. And you allowed that, and you blessed each man with his own um, blessing. May you do that here, Lord God. And uh, may you be with each one of us this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Well, you guys have a good week and look for my videos online uh, and be sure to uh, keep me in your prayers and I'll keep you in mine. And you have from one dollar to a million bucks to to, uh, to, uh, to give. So give to the pastor that you think best, uh, that you think God wants you to, 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 to bless. You've got radio pastors and you've got street corner pastors and we've got pastors in uh church buildings but church remember to give okay and give cheerfully in the name of our lord